In the second part of my AutoCAD Basics tutorial series, I want to show you the wall tool. As you can see, you can draw straight walls, you can draw curved walls, you can have composite walls, you can have basic walls, and you can also produce complex profile walls. Let's start from scratch and show you how this all works. First of all, you have to select the wall tool. Then you can draw a single wall by clicking two times with your left mouse button. This is a wall. Now you can check in the 3D window because a wall is a 3D element and you can see each 3D element in the 3D window. Here you are. I'm navigating, pressing the scroll wheel and the shift key so I can rotate my camera around. When I release the shift key, pressing the scroll wheel allows me to pan my camera around. I can also use the scroll wheel for zooming in and out. To get an overview, you want to check the fit in window command. This makes all your 3D elements fit into your 3D window. Now let's select this wall and press Ctrl T to bring up the settings panel. Let's deal with the geometry and positioning part of the settings. And here we have two crucial values, the thickness of the wall and the height of the wall. Let's first talk about the thickness. As you can see, this wall is 500 millimeters thick and I can change the thickness to, let's say, 200 millimeters. So of course this makes the wall thinner and with Ctrl Z I can undo this. Then I can change the height and just so you know, this is only possible as long as the wall is not constrained to the story above which it may well be. So if it was constrained to the story above, you couldn't change the wall height. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about when talking about stories. Just for the moment, check not linked. So you are free to change the height to something else. Let's say we want to have a wall that is five meters high. So we enter 5,000 millimeters. And now the wall is just higher than before. Now let's talk about the reference line of the wall. When you select the wall, you see there is a blue line showing up. And this blue line represents the reference line of the wall. The wall is a 3D element. It's got an axis and this axis is this reference line. This is actually the line that you draw. You can change the wall position in relation to this reference line. As soon as you have constructed this wall, you may change the orientation of the wall regarding the reference line by clicking on this button. And you see the wall changes its orientation, the reference line staying at the same location, but the wall jumping from one side to the other. Let's repeat this in the floor plan window. Again, when you select the wall, you see the blue line. Again, when you click on this button, you can see how the wall changes its orientation. There is another option and you can check the options that you have pressing on this small menu. You see outside face, inside face. This is just what we did some seconds ago. So you can also click, for example, on outside face and you see the same happening as before. But you can also check the center position. So you have a reference line like a middle axis of the wall. This is something that you have to keep in mind. While drawing, you draw the reference line and the wall takes its position on one side or the other or in the middle. As with the geometry methods, which we're going to talk about in just a moment, you can always change the wall position regarding the reference line while drawing. So when I draw a wall, I can start. And when I see the wall is on the wrong side of the reference line, I can just switch it by pressing this button. And now it's on the other side. Let's talk about the geometry methods. As with the line tool, you have some options for the geometry of the walls that you draw. At the moment, we have the single wall option checked. You can also click on this button and use a chained wall. So similar to the chained line geometry method, you can produce a sequence of walls like so. Double clicking the last point makes you stop. Then under the same button, you can choose the rectangle geometry method and again, you can also and always change the geometry method while drawing. So if I wanted to draw a chained wall, I could still change the geometry method before going on with my drawing. Let's stick to the rectangle method and go on. Now we have a rectangular wall. And just to present you with all the options, there's also the rotated rectangle for the walls. With the wall tool, you have some more options. You can also have a circular wall. Let's choose this method. And as you can see, the first point is the center of a circle. And then you are allowed to draw a sector of a circle, producing a reference line. And by this, producing a circular wall. Again, you can change the reference line orientation by clicking on this button. Now the wall is on the outside. 
And here you are, a circular wall. Of course, you can also close the wall. There are some more options to produce a circular wall. Feel free to study these. Also, feel free to study the special geometry methods trapezoid and polygonal. They present rather rare use cases, so I won't talk about this in this video. Check them out for yourself. Actually, there is one more geometry method which is not presented to you up here in the info box, and it's called the magic wand method. And let me show you what this means. Let's change back to the ground floor window and draw a curved line with the spline tool. This is a 2D geometry. This one wouldn't show up in the 3D window, but now we can use the wall tool just to be sure we check the single wall or one of the standard geometry methods again. And now we press the spacebar and move our cursor over the spline and you see a preview. And when you click on this, you have a curved wall. In the 3D window, you can see how this looks. This geometry method called the magic wand has some settings. You find them under the design menu, magic wand settings. I'll talk about the magic wand in depth in another video, especially when talking about meshes for terrain models. For this video, we will leave it and proceed with the wall tool. Now let me talk about another thing, the connections of walls. Let me draw a wall like this and another one like this one. And now let's say we want to connect these walls. There is a command for this in the edit menu, but for the sake of you understanding what connecting walls means, let me do this by hand. As you can see, we have the reference lines on the inside. And now I can take this wall by grabbing this endpoint and move it over to this one. And now you see they connect. It seems that these walls build one monolithic structure, but actually it's still two walls. So this is standard ARCHICAD procedure combining two elements made from the same building material and with the same structure. And this is called intersection. In the options menu, you see there is a command that's called auto intersection. This should be checked because this means that elements made up from the same building material and having the same structure connect to each other. Connecting elements in a complex 3D model is not a trivial issue, but for the moment, this is just a piece of information for you that walls like these connect to each other. But as I showed you, the reference lines have to meet, otherwise they won't connect. Back to my wall settings, which I can also check by double-clicking the tool. You see that we concentrated on drawing basic walls, but we can also have composite walls. And as soon as you check this option, you may choose from a catalog of predefined multi-skin systems. Let's take the block insulated cavity plastered with a thickness of 215 millimeters. Now, when I draw a wall like this, you see it's got several skins and we can also have a rectangle of course and when you draw a rectangle like this you see that the thicker part of the system is on the inside and the thinner part the exterior is on the outside and when you check this in the 3d window it looks like this the composite walls as i showed you come from some kind of catalog this catalog is project specific so each file, each ARCHICAD file can have a different set of multi-skin systems, meaning you are the one who can manage and rebuild this list. Let's go to the options, element attributes, composites. Now this composite management window presents you with one of your composite systems, the concrete floor insulated with parquet. And when you click on this menu, you see all the multi-skin systems that this template file of ARCHICAD contains or offers you. And you can always check, for example, the wall systems, for example, the one we used in our small little model. And now you see the structure of this system and you can change it. You can see you have skins, you can insert skins, you can remove skins. You can also assign different pens. You can decide whether it's core, finish or other, and you can define the thickness of each skin. We won't deal with this at the moment, this is just to inform you that composite systems exist in ARCHICAD, that you can build them up of your own, and that you can, of course, use them for your 3D model. Finally, I want to show you the third type of wall that you can produce. Let's double-click the tool again. And as you can see, there is a third little icon here, and it's offering you the complex profile. So this works similar to the composite system. So you check this option, and now you can choose between a small set of predefined profiles. Let's 
take the brick wall with footing and now we can draw a wall rectangle or let's decide for a single wall at the moment and check this in the 3d window and as you can see this is similar to a composite structure it's also a little bit more complex because as you can see it does not only have skins parallel to each other like in the composite system but it's got also different building materials in vertical order and again the catalog that you may choose from can be managed as well by you and it's also project specific options element attributes profile manager and here you can choose between profiles that have already been created so let's say you want to change one of these you can click on this one and you can click on edit and now a huge window opens up where you can redraw the profile and thus changing this profile for your catalog and you can also produce new profiles in this window so this is something which is pretty complex and pretty powerful and we will talk about this in a special video but just for the moment so you know this is the third option that you have for a wall in the beginning of this video i told you the wall height can be changed when the upper edge of the wall is not constrained to the story above. Stories are defined in the design menu, story settings, and here you can see there's a very simple structure in this file containing three stories, ground floor, first floor, second floor. There is a story height attached to each story and the corresponding elevation for each succeeding story. So when I change the story height of the ground floor to let's say 4000, you'll see that the elevation of the first floor will be 4,000 and the story height of the first floor stays 3,000. The next one will be 7,000. So this is something that you can implement on your own. You can delete stories, you can insert them. So let's finish this with pressing OK. Now again, let's draw a wall, a basic wall, and let's draw it like 2 meters 80 in height, not linked to the story above, and a thickness of 23 centimeters. OK. Now we have this wall and now let's check how this wall looks in an elevation. For this we have the elevation tool. The elevation tool lets you draw a line and let's decide you in which direction you will look. Now that you have produced this elevation marker, you can right click it and open the elevation with the command open with current view settings. Now you see the wall and you see the wall in the context of the story structure. You remember we set the ground floor height to 4000. So this is what you can see here. And now we can link the upper edge of the wall to the story level above by clicking on first story and set this offset to zero, meaning the upper edge of the wall is exactly on the same height as the base level of story one. And now you can see that the wall is higher and is also exactly on the height of the first story. Now, when I change my story settings, let's say we reduce this to 3,500 millimeters, you'll see that the story level moves down and that my wall, because of the constraint of the upper edge, is also less in height. The bottom edge is also constrained. As you can see, it's called home story. And as we drew this wall in the ground floor window, we automatically attached this wall to the ground floor. So this is why it says home story ground floor. With this small excursion into the realm of stories and story element constraints. I'll finish this second part of my Archicad Basics video tutorial series and I'll see you in the next video.